Good morning, y'all. It's me again, just Jerry here uh, from Simply Serenity Ranch. Um, today I thought I would make for you kind of one of my favorite things to do with uh, leftover fruit. It's kind of a preserving thing. Um, it's a historically accurate recipe that I'm using from the 14th century, but I think um, uh, this sort of candying of fruit uh, is something that goes way back. Um, I'm using mandarin oranges or clementines, um, you know, what do they call them, cuties or something these days. But instead of using it fresh, um, because of course, you know, I can peel this and, and, and eat this, I am just using the peel. Okay, but there's a couple steps to it. First of all, I'm not using fresh peel uh, by any means. I'm only one person. I bought a huge bag of these cuties um, at the store uh, for New Year's. And, um, I've been eating them, but you know, you get like 20 in a bag and, um, I only eat one or two a day. Um, great for vitamin C, nice and tasty and in season. Um, pretty fairly historically accurate for whatever centuries you're planning on. Um, uh, because oranges were traded, um, uh, on the Silk Road and things like that. So, uh, these Mandarin oranges, you know, come from China or I guess they aren't considered mandarin oranges for nothing, but instead of using the fresh um, clementine, I'm using just the peel, and I have collected it over the last few days, and you're saying, ooh, you know, why would you want to eat five-day-old uh, uh, orange peel, and um, basically what you do is um, soak them in uh, clean, cold water, um, you'll see that the water gets cloudy overnight or whatever like that. That's fine. You have to change the water every day. Um, and I just keep adding new peels. And, and what that does is it makes all this uh, pith, the P-I-T-H, pith, the white stuff that's in here, um, get really, really soft. And um, it absorbs all the water um, for those few days. And, you know, I wouldn't go longer than a week um, of changing the water. Uh, I'm kind of at the end of four to five days here but it makes the, the peel very soft and malleable. And I'm just slicing it into uh, little julienne pieces here um, for the main part. And uh, my goal here is I'm gonna cook this and uh, then preserve it. And one of the best pres pres uh, preservation um, things is honey and sugar as well. Um, but you know, cane sugar, rock sugar, um, was very difficult to come by because, you know, not in the 14th century, um, you know, there was very few ways of being able to get sugar. So you're going to be using honey. Um, honey is an antibiotic. It is a probiotic. Um, uh, and many people kept bee skips, um, in their, um, own home gardens where they could, or they went and got wild honey in the forest. But basically I'm just making little strips. You can cut this in Whatever bits that you want, mine are maybe a little over an eighth to a quarter inch long. See, I don't know if you can see that, but it's I'm julienning it into little strips. And you can chop, chop this up into dice if you were putting it into something like a spice cake, a fruit cake. Um, but one good thing about this recipe of making candied orange peels is that, um, you know, it's good if you got a sore throat. Um, you can throw it in some hot tea. It adds a nice little juge to your old-fashioned i know that might not be a period drink unless you're doing something from the what, 1940s or 30s um i think yeah i think it's 40s but anyway um you know it's candy and orange peel so um it helps preserve it and uh you know the process here helps pull all of the water out and all of the honey in so basically now that i've gotten everything chopped up um I'm going to go ahead and let's see, I don't know if you can see my hand, but there's my, my little julienne of orange peels. I'm going to spread it out here and I'm going to uh, turn this on a medium heat uh, just to get it going. Um, you'll probably want to stir it for a little while, um, but the whole goal is to get the honey uh, to replace the water. And so you need to put the honey and water in. Now, if you this is great because if you have some crystallized honey, uh, which I had an older jar of honey here, um, and I had a little crystallization. I put it on a cookie sheet, and I put it in a warm oven to kind of mm, re-caramelize um, uh, uh, down into the honey. But, you know, this is a standard jar. i got about half of it here. You really don't need as much honey as you think. Um, even though I have probably about a 
cup to a cup and a half of, of wet orange peels here. Um, I don't even think I'm going to use all of this half jar, and it's a one pound, eight ounce jar. So net weight of 24 ounces. I'm probably using um, maybe about eight ounces, so about a cup of honey. And I'm just going to pour that in over the top. And when honey melts, it obviously gets um, less viscous. So, um, you know, it'll get a little bit more um, uh, soupy and watery. Um, and that's great. And, uh, you know, as you cook this and simmer this on low heat, you've got a couple of things going on. It'll make the house smell really nice. Um, I know. It, it, it's honey, so it's going to take a little while. Um, I'll go ahead and let it drip in there while I'm while I'm talking, and I'm going to get another jar of honey, too, because this is still a little crystallized. Now, what I can do is I could have another pot of boiling water, um, and I could stick the, the bottle in. Uh, you know, you don't want, since it's in plastic, you don't really want that plasticky PV. A or whatever it is. I have no idea what plastic it is. It's supposed to be food grade plastic, but you never want that. So, oh, there we go. It had a, a plug of crystallized honey still in it, so that's why it wasn't um, pouring out. But basically, I'm using about a cup of honey to, you know, this cup of honey could probably do, um, you know, maybe two cups of orange peel, something like that. You really don't need a whole lot because, as I said, it gets pulled into the um, orange peel by the, um, shoot, I'm trying to think, osmosis kind of, of the water leaving and being boiled off on the simmer. Still have a lot of crystallized honey, but, you know, this is a good thing to get rid of the crystallized honey. Um, and do something with, you know, stuff that you think you can't use as a cook. It's like, I, I never throw anything out. You know, when I do my crafts and stuff like that, you would be surprised at the creative uses of little tiny pieces of leather and fabric that I have. I turn larger pieces into uh, leather boas and trim, and, and if I have itty-bitty pieces, I've turned it into leather potpourri just because I like the scent of leather. Um, you know, and it's a pretty color. You can make leather confetti. Um, but in this case, um, I have most of the jar. Um, as you can see, it's kind of still got plenty of crystallized honey have it in the oven for very long I was afraid the uh, jar wouldn't uh, would would melt um, but I mean it just looks kind of like a lump now you see the honey and the stuff it'll eventually melt out and it'll start bubbling and you want to do it on a you know like a, a slow um, heat so um, high low um, or a medium heat I know high, high low sounds funny but we're talking you know not simmer a little bit above simmer and you can leave this on and you don't need anything else because the water is already in the candied or the soon to be candied um, uh, slices. And as that boils off and evaporates, the honey will replace it. So um, that gets into all the orange walls and the cellular structure. So it becomes very, very sweet. And what you're left with is a very sticky, chewy candy. Now I'm going to pull some over here that I made last year, and I do mean last year, this was last December something, before Christmas, and as you can see I'm shaking it up to kind of break it up, because you know, sugar and honey and stuff sticks, um, but, we, but what you end up with is a really chewy little, little treat, it turns a little darker, you get that honey color in, and to keep it from being sticky, um, I use rock sugar, um, and a, a blending of spices and herbs, which may sound kind of weird uh, for a modern palate, but medieval palates are more of like a, a sweet sour kind of a thing. We, you know, um, like a hot heat, but with a sweet, um, with a, a, a sour, and, and you get a little bit of all of these flavors. There's some bitterness from the orange peel, but because you're replacing it with honey, um, and then you're putting on different spices, um, and in last year's, I've got sugar, ginger, cinnamon, and pepper, black pepper, fresh ground black pepper. And, you know, I just threw it in a Tupperware. I mean, if you had a nice uh, glass jar or something, if you want to display it, that's great too. And it's kind of like using, you can use it for throat lozenges. There's great vitamin C with the, the herbs and spices. There's all kinds of medicinal properties uh, from those specific um, additives, you know, like ginger and, and, and cinnamon are good for the digestion. You know, it helps clean your teeth. Um, uh, we've already talked about the, the um, antibiotic properties and, and, and pre and probiotic properties of honey. 
So it's actually a really good digestive. And it's crunchy and chewy and sweet. And you have, you know, a really interesting flavor. Now you can experiment with different spices when you get to the point that all of the honey has melted. I'm going to stir this here. Give me a second. Should have had a spoon nearby. But anyway, you can see my dirty dishes, but we'll get to those after I'm done with these. But as you, um, as the honey melts and the water evaporates, you just stir around and make sure that all of the bits of the uh, orange peel are covered. And, you know, um, it'll eventually, over, say, 20 minutes of uh, simmering or 30 minutes of simmering, um, all the water will be off and all you'll have left is uh, orange peel with hot honey. And then what you do, I'm not, I'm not going to do it yet because clearly my uh, my honey uh, or my water has not evaporated enough. But what you end up doing is I take like a piece of parchment paper um, on a cookie tray or, you know, if you have a, have a marble board or something, um, you end up laying all of your slices out, your sticky slices of honey, and they'll solidify because as they're warm, they're going to be more pliable, but they'll get <clears throat> hardened. Sorry, I had a piece go down my throat. Um, you know, the advantages of a, of a, of a live action cooking show and, and the raw just jerry meat. Um, but you lay them out and let them dry uh, before you put them into your sugar spice mixture. So they just have to, they'll still be sticky, but they won't be so, so gooey. And then you throw them in your, your box, your tin, you know, and you shake them up with the spices. And uh, like I said, they keep for quite some time. Um, I forget which book I had. I, I think it was a French cuisine one, um, the history of French cooking. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think they even found things like this in, uh, you know, ancient burial grounds and things like that. I just can't recall right now. I'd have to go uh, back into my library and do a little more research. Um, but... As I said, you know, it's a nice little thing. You can leave them with just the stickiness, but then they kind of stick all together. That's why you end up putting the spices. Now, cinnamon, ginger, um, um, I'm trying to think of all kinds of things that you could actually put on them. Like I said, I like the black pepper because you get a little bit of a heat and some spice with that. You could use, a, you know, if you like things a little more spicy, you can um, use something like uh, paprika, which is a, a period spice, or paprika, however you pronounce it. Um, uh, you know, or a spicy cayenne pepper to throw into the mix. But, you know, you want to kind of keep that sugar in there uh, with the honey. Um, it doesn't have to be powdered sugar. That's, you know, but whatever you'd like, it creates a nice little thing. And then you can dice it up and put it in your food, stick it on top of your cupcakes, whatever. And it is pretty tasty. So I'd encourage you to try something like this. Because one, with the way prices are, Today, um, for food, I mean, I went into the grocery store. I bought what I would have thought would have been about thirty to forty dollars worth of just general food for the week, and uh, that was including a bag of clementines for four bucks, which I was like, woohoo! Clementines for four under four bucks is is, is a good deal, because um, they're usually a little bit more than that, and uh, uh, things like that. But it'll it'll last all winter, you know. It's some. Uh, Historically, it, it helped people have um, less issues with things like scurvy. Um, it's just, in general, good for you. It's a nice little palate cleanser in between uh, if you're doing like medieval feasts or something, if you're doing a reenactment or whatever. And they stay nice. You can wrap it up in wax paper um, or parchment paper, stick it in your pocket, and have it as a nice little treat. And um, you know, it's, it's actually really pretty tasty. I'm sorry. I'm enjoying it this morning. But um, my stuff is boiling, and that's great. I'm going to turn it down a little bit, and now I'm going to simmer it for maybe another 10 minutes until um, I think all of the uh, water is, is out. And, you know, you don't want it to burn, but you will have quite a lot of um, uh, hot honey. So just like hot oil, be very careful and use like a skimmer or a, um, a pair of tongs or you know, something like that to take them out of the honey because you don't just want to pour it across it because eventually the honey is going to re-solidify and it'll be a really sticky mess on parchment paper on your board or something like that. You want to have the individual pieces kind of separated. 
um, so that you have all of the spices and everything on each of the piece kind of equally. So um, other than that, that is my idea on how to uh, extend your uh, food prep in hard times. This is something that you could do while you're camping. You know, if you take some of this fresh food on a hike and save it in a little plastic bag, um, you know, because you leave no trace, you got to take all your trash with you. Now, this is a bio biological project product that, you know, will eventually uh, go into the ground, but I prefer to do something to feed myself instead of, uh, you know, the, the cycle of biological animals. Um, it's also, because it's the orange, um, you know, it smells really nice. It's a nice thing to make while you're, uh, it reminds me of Christmas, you know, that kind of thing, but it's a nice uh, uh, home air freshener. So thank you all for joining me this morning. Cheers. And uh, enjoy making some candied orange peel and uh, coming up with creative uses for it. So otherwise, this is just Jerry signing off. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye. Oh, I can't work my video today. Thank you. Bye-bye.